left. Sound Sleuth Lab. Jack. Testing one, two. Jack. We're going to build some really cool world class microphones today. This is the build portion of an instructable. See the description for the link to that, including all the parts needed to build this. These microphones use a true condenser capsule. That means it uses an external bias voltage to polarize it. In our case, 80 volts DC. It also uses the same OPA base circuit as my previous instructable, except we're gonna use two of them. We're doing something that truly makes this build special. Using a dual diaphragm capsule, we bring out the signals from both sides of the mic. This lets us determine the pattern of the microphone in post and not before or during recording. More on this in the use video. Okay, the first thing we need to do is get our bias voltage. To do that, we're using a hex inverter set up as a voltage multiplier. The first stage of our inverter is set up as an oscillator. When power is applied, in our case, 12 volts DC, the little one nanofarad capacitor is not charged so there's zero volts at the junction of the 10K resistor and the capacitor. That ground, or zero, goes into the input of the inverter, producing a one at the output, which is positive 12 volts. The one nanofarad cap starts charging through the 10K resistor, and about a microsecond, it charges to the point that the inverter switches to seeing a one on its input and changes the output to a zero, or ground. The inverter chip we're using has hysteresis built into it, so it doesn't need to get all the way to 12 volts to see the input as a one. Now the little capacitor starts discharging through the 10K resistor and a bit later the input sees a zero and switches the output to high or 12 volts and the whole cycle starts all over. The end result is a 100 kilohertz or so oscillator. The key for us is that this is significantly above the audio range so we won't get any interference. Now here's where the real cool part happens. While the output of the first inverter is at ground, the capacitor connected to it charges to 12 volts through the diode. Now when the output switches to 12 volts DC, that places the 12 volts on the cap in series with the 12 volt output of the inverter. Now we've got 24 volts that causes the next diode to conduct and charge the next capacitor to 24 volts. As each inverter stage switches back and forth between ground and 12 volts, we add 12 volts to the following stage. After six stages of this, we have about 80 volts. Doing this was invented, if you want to call it that, in the early 1980s. The final two resistors and capacitors filter the output and provide a nice clean bias voltage. The 12 volts we are using comes from the Zener diode supply on our OPA board. The electronics we are building here will work with all large diaphragm condenser capsules. There are three main styles of these. First up is an RK12 capsule for microphone parts. These are fantastic replicas of the famous CK12 capsule used in many great microphones over the years. This one is edge terminated, meaning that the signal is taken from the edge and that the diaphragm material is conductive all the way across the film. This design first showed up in 1951. These are from my first real mic build and I have a matched pair of them. They both use fed electronics for mic parts and I run them on 75 volt DC bias voltage. Next up is the center terminated Newman K87. This is for my own U87 manufactured in 1983. I was a little hesitant to take it apart, but I'm really glad I did. There were small dust and debris particles inside the head basket, and this gave me a chance to clean it up. Very nice German precision engineering went into this one. This design takes the signal from the center of the capsule and has slightly different acoustic characteristics. More on that in the instructable. Now on to the Transound TSC2. This is remarkably well built and thanks to advances in CNC tooling, etc., probably more consistent than what Newman was making 40 years ago. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, I did. Look, I absolutely love my Newman, just like a vintage Porsche, but engineering progress is a great thing and I embrace it. Oh, did I mention that the TSC2 cost $40? and Transound is ISO certified, and they've been in business for like 20 years. Yes, these are great capsules. There is way more to this than I'm gonna get into here, and I really encourage you to research the history of condenser microphones and condenser capsules. Okay, this is the TSC-1 capsule. The front diaphragm is center terminated so that we can get the signal off of the capsule. 
and then the rear has no electrical connection and this one you can actually see through to see the precision machining that goes on into the brass backplate. Okay, on to the dual channel OPA board. This is literally two of the previous mic build laid out on one PC board. The circuit function is identical, so please see that build video for an in-depth look at how the circuit works. Both circuits share a common ground, so there are five wires to the board, and we're gonna use a five pin XLR connector on the mic body and a breakout cable to two three pin XLR connectors so that we can get both signals out of the microphone. Assembly of the PC board is as follows. Start with the hard part, the surface mount ICs. The PCB is marked showing you where pin one is, and the IC has a line on it for the side with pin one as well. I find it easiest to have the board flat, hold the IC in the correct place, and then using a tin soldering iron, touch it to a pin and the board to solder them. Here we're going to go through each component so you know where they all go. After the ICs are soldered in place, solder the 47 ohm resistors, R1, 2, and R11 and 12. Then we have eight 2.2K resistors, R3, 4, 6, and 9, along with R13, 14, 16, and 19. Now the two 200 ohm resistors, R5 and R15. Next up are the four 47K ohm resistors, R7 and 8, and R17 and 18. And now our Zener diodes, D1 and D2. These are polarized, so pay attention to the line on the body and the line on the printed circuit board marking where they go. Alright, now it's capacitor time. Starting with the 0.1 microfarad caps C1, C6, C18, and C13, we're using WIMA caps for these. Please see the instructable for more information on capacitors. Now we are on to the electrolytics. These two are polarized, with the longer leads being positive and the negative side is marked on the body. First are the 35 volt 47 microfarad caps. These are all for voltage supply filtering and only see 12 volts DC or less. They are C2, C5, C7, C9, C12, and C14. Now the ones that are in the audio path. These are rated for 65 volts because they could potentially see the 48 volt DC phantom power. And they are C3, C4, C10, and C11. Note how all the negative markings all line up when they're installed. At this point, I like to wash my board and then inspect it prior to installing the 1 gig ohm resistors. Now the last components, the two 1 gig ohm resistors, R10 and R20. Alright, let's build the hex inverter. The board was originally laid out to allow a trim pot for voltage adjustment and an onboard voltage regulator. We are not using those and we will just jumper them out. Install the main input filter capacitor. It is C10 on the board and a 4.7 microfarad cap. This one is polarized so pay attention. Alright, now the oscillator components. The 1 nanofarad cap and the 10K resistor. Next, the output filter components. Two 1 mega ohm and a 0.1 microfarad caps, R1 and 2, and C1 and C2. Now let's put in all the 0.01 microfarad caps, C3 through C8. Now the diodes, D1 through D7. These are polarized with a line on the body and a line on the printed circuit board silk screen. This board needs to be really clean as well so that we don't get random leakage currents and thus noise. At this point, solder on short wires to the input leads of the board. A little bit longer than the board is perfect. To test it, you can hook up a power supply and measure the output. If all is good, let's continue the microphone build. Prep the 5-pin XLR insert by connecting the four 22 nanofarad capacitors to signal pins 2, 3, 4, and 5 and then the other end of the capacitors to ground, to pin 1. These provide EMI and RF noise suppression for the microphone. A lot of commercial microphones don't include these and they really should. Also note that pin 1 is connected to the ground lug on the XLR. This becomes our single point ground connection to the microphone body when it's installed. Prep 5 wires to connect the XLR connector to the dual OPA board. 
I'm using 22 gauge different colored wires and they're about three inches long. Connect the wires to the XLR connector and then inspect it. Insert the five pin connector through the frame of the donor body. Yours may look a little bit different depending on which one you're using. Tighten it in place with a small screwdriver. All right, now we're ready to attach the circuit boards. For consistency between builds, I like to make sure the audio board is facing the tab on the frame. This tab faces front on the microphone. Connect the wires as follows. Pin one ground, which is the middle of the board. Pin two and three are for signal A, which will be our front capsule diaphragm, and pin four and five will be our rear capsule diaphragm. Pay attention to the connections. Pin two goes to 2A, pin three to 3A, pin four to 2B, and pin five to 3B. This keeps the phasing of the capsule outputs correct. Now connect the voltage multiplier board. This will connect to VCC A1 and ground A on the dual output board or VCC1 and ground T for the single channel board. This board will mount on the opposite side of the audio board on the frame. Mount the boards to the frame using the correct hardware. In this case, I had to drill the frame out and use an M2.5 machine screw, nut, and washer. The BM800 bodies are threaded, so a nut is not needed. See the instructable for more information. Once the boards are mounted, it's time to assemble the capsule to the saddle and then mount that to the frame. Most capsules use M1.6 screws and the TSC1 and TSC2 do as well. I bought an assortment of these from Amazon, which is in the spare parts list in the Instructable. The saddle uses 5mm long screws and uses 4 of them. Snug them up and then check them again. Don't over tighten as you may crack the saddle. Put four of the servo grommets into the mount slots and then mount it to the frame. Typically only two of the four holes are threaded and that will hold this just fine. And we actually want to run the wires through the other two. This lets us easily see which wires run to the front and the rear diaphragms. Once the capsule is mounted, carefully inspect it and then install the head basket. Connect the capsule wires to the OPA boards front to signal A and rear to signal B, and then connect the capsule backplane to the POL connection or polarizing connection on the bias voltage board. Finally, reassemble the body and the mic build is complete. The breakout cable. To use this, we will need a five pin to dual three pin XLR breakout cable. Pin one is common to all the connections and is our ground. Front is pin two and three on the female XLR and rear is pin 4 and 5 on the female XLR. I used two channel snake cables and color coded the male XLR connectors so I can easily see which one is what. Alright, these bad boys are built. Let's go test them. Okay, this is me testing the microphone. I'm about 4 or 5 inches away from it, leaning in very close and talking in a deep voice. Now I'm over to the side of it. I am directly in line with it sideways. And now I'm heading to the rear capsule and I'm going to continue talking into a really close, intimate, up close vocal narration. It was a dark and stormy night. Now I'm over to the other side. Same thing, about six inches away. Now about four feet away. Um, in front of the rear capsule and I'm walking over to the side and now I'm directly in line with the side of the capsule. First you're hearing me mixing this in mono and then I'm going to invert the phase of the rear channel. So we should go into a figure eight mode and I should be pretty close to the null point at this point. Now I'm going to stand over about 30 degrees away from it speaking and then I will adjust the null so that hopefully we can null this out in post the way that I was describing the instructable. Now I'm about four feet away from it in the front of the front capsule. And this is me talking, you should be hearing a lot of ambience from the room. Um, and now I'm gonna walk back in close. So now what you'll hear is me very close with the intimate voice. And then I'm going to start mixing in the rear capsule until the proximity effect goes away. And you should be hearing that right now, if everything works. and. Uh, Welcome to my Instructable. I hope you like this microphone build. It is truly a fantastic microphone. So let's go out in the field and hear someone else who has a much better voice than I do record with it.
Thank you. People living their lives for you on TV. They say they're better than you and you agree. She says, hold my calls from behind those cold brick walls. She says, come here, boy, there ain't nothing for free. Another doctor's bill, a lawyer's bill, another cute, cheap thrill. You know you love him if you put him in your will, but who will say your soul when it comes to the flowers now? Oh, who will save your soul after all those lies you told, boy? Who will save your soul if you won't save your own? Try to bustle them, try to cuss them. The cops want someone to bust down on Orleans Avenue. Another day, another dollar, another war, another tower went up where the homeless had their homes. And so we pray to as many different gods as there are flowers, and we call religion our friend. We're so worried about saving our souls, afraid that God will take his toll, that we forget to begin. But who will say? Save your soul when it comes to the flowers now. Oh, who will save your soul after all those lies you told, boy? Who will save your soul if you won't save your own? Some are talking, some are stalking their kill Got social security, but it doesn't pay their bills There are addictions to feed and mouths to pay So you bargain with the devil that you're okay for today Say that you love them, take their money and run Say it's been swell, sweetheart, but it was just one of those things Those flings, those things, those strings you gotta cut So get out on the street, girls, and bust your butts Who will say? your soul when it comes to the babies now oh who will save your soul after all those lies you told boy who will save your soul if you won't save your own leather da 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 